Everyone knows what framing is. It's that assembled lumber that creates the shape and the frame of the house. You drive down the road and you see that tangled mess of wood and most people can go, hey, that's the framing. But uh, do you really know what the components are, the processes are? Could you actually understand uh, what framing is? So today what we're gonna do is walk you through um, how to frame a house from the top down. I mean, well, no, we'll probably go from the bottom up and maybe by the end of this, you'll know how to frame a house. Okay, the first part about framing a house is going to be, well, we start with the foundation, and then the first board that we put on is actually the two by six seal plate right here. It's pressure treated. It's got seal sealer underneath it, so it does not rot. We don't put regular wood on concrete because it'll rot. Pour the foundation, and then you set the seal plate on the entire perimeter of the foundation. And then we take here, in here we have a anchor bolt that goes here. Anchor bolts usually go about every four feet. And that keeps the house from sliding back and forth like this. It's, some people think it lifts. No, it's not for lift. It's actually for sliding back and forth. Okay, this is the best place in the house in the crawl space. It's terrible. There you see that foundation. You see this two by six sill plate right here that's pressure treated. We've got a knee wall or a pony wall. And then we've got our floor joist here. These are TGI floor joists made out of oriented strand board. And then you can see back there, we actually have the TGIs butting up against the foundation with hangers, Simpson, Simpson hangers that actually hook on the top and hang. So we don't actually have to sit that floor joist on top of the foundation. That gives you no steps in your house to the outside. That's what we like. Okay, so the next thing, I was in the crawl space, I got all dirty, it's not my favorite place to be. We've got that TGI, is what we call it, or an eye joist. It's actually shaped like an eye. We set that, you saw us do that down there. Next is the sheathing on top. We call it the subfloor, subfloor sheathing. This particular stuff is three quarters of an inch. We've got stuff that's an inch and an eighth. That stuff will break your back. Okay, so I'm out of the crawl space. I'm so glad I'm out of the crawl space. Now we're gonna start framing some walls. Framing walls, it's really fun. What we typically do is frame walls on the floor and then we stand them up. It works well that way, it's easier. Sometimes we'll frame walls and we'll say we're stick framing them. So we're usually framing them between something in the top, like a ceiling and a floor. But where we start is from the bottom up is we start with our bottom plate. We have our bottom plate and then we have our two top plates. And then we have our studs in the middle. You can put studs on three different layouts. 16 inch on center, 19 point something on center, and 24 inches. Typically our stud walls are at 16 inch on centers. That way your sheeting actually lines up on each side. Now we put the sheeting on. The whole purpose of the sheeting is so we don't get a house of cards that just falls over. We don't want our house just to fall over. So the sheeting helps the house keep it from falling over. So we nail that sheeting up to, sometimes we'll nail every two inches on the edge and every eight inches in the center of the sheeting, we'll nail it off. Hold downs right here. These hold downs help give us extra shear, which keeps that house of cards from falling over. You know, we don't want our house just to fall over. We've all seen the YouTube videos of the house just falling over. So what this does is it creates a shear panel so then the house doesn't just fall over. Can I say fall over any more times? Okay, so here's a pretty good spot to show you what a shear panel is. Sometimes we'll call it an alternate brace panel. Alternate brace panel usually means that we're using a hold down. This is a hold down here. We've got two hold downs. So we've got a wall here that's 32 inches by 10 feet tall and that's creating a shear panel. And these two hold downs are keeping it from tipping over. So it keeps this from lifting up. Remember earlier we talked about anchor bolts? Anchor bolts are this, and hold down bolts are lift up. So then the house stays down and doesn't tip over. So then the house doesn't just fall over. Okay, we've got our walls framed. Our house isn't gonna tip over. Got my pointer stick here. So now let's take a look at our walls though. We've got a header at the top. We've got jack studs or trimmers and a king stud. That's the terminology around this area. Some people fight over trimmers and jacks. Header, we've got our top plates. This is a MST strap right here. And then we have our TGIs again. Now we're repeating the process for the second floor. 
So we'll go up to the second floor and we'll talk about the second floor walls and then the trusses that go on top of the second floor to make the roof. I lied. We're not going upstairs yet. Let's talk about stairs. We gotta get upstairs somehow. We're not gonna jump. We're not gonna, you know, fly up there like a magic fairy princess. So here we go. We've got stair horses. These are your stair horses here. Then we cut them out and we have a rise. Come in here and take a look. We've got a rise and a run. And ultimately we take the height of the stairs from the top to the bottom. We divide it by about seven and a half inches and we get the number of rises and the number of treads. So how, so we've got a riser and we've got our tread. I don't know, stairs are kind of boring I guess, but they get us upstairs. Okay, let's head upstairs now. Now you can take a look at the top side of the stairs. We've got our tread and our riser. Tread and riser. Okay, now we're upstairs. Come with me. Let's talk about some interior walls. Interior walls, we frame those the same as the exterior walls. We have them here, they're 16 inch on the center, which is pretty typical. We got the bottom plate, the two top plates. You'll have to go check out, I do a few short. I got one video where I'm saying an apprentice tip is to take these plates off so then the drywallers don't, the screws can't go through it. Well, the whole purpose of these plates is so the screws don't go into the pipes. Pretty funny short, you have to check that out. Going down the wall, we've got where two walls come together, we'll put blocking in here and we call it nailer blocking for the drywall so the drywall has something to screw to. Our interior walls, they don't have any sheeting on them but they do have drywall. You put the drywall on both sides. Kind of we all understand that. So now as we come to this exterior wall, this looks kind of funny. We have blocking going through the wall. The reason we have this blocking here is because there's a roof on the other side. We have to put fire blocking in a house because these here create chimneys that fire go up through. Code is that we can't have these stud bays that are chimneys any more than 10 feet. So every 10 feet we have to put a block or in every roof line we have to put a block. We also put blocking in the wall to nail our sheeting. I also did a short video about cutting blocking without a square tape measure. That one's pretty funny too. Okay, so let's move to the roof. So if we come up here to the roof, we've got trusses. These are our trusses here, manufactured off-site and hauled in. Then we've got hurricane clips right here. These hurricane clips keep the roof of the house from coming off, or if you want to call it the hat of the house. So it keeps the hat from flying off. We always put birdie blocks right here in between the trusses. Guess what? The birdie blocks keep the birds out of the attic. We vent through the birdie blocks as well. We have venting here that goes up to the ridge so we create airflow so we don't get that nasty word, mold. So let's move on to what kind of roofs there are. Ah! Okay, here's a few different kinds of roofs and how we frame them. Usually we frame a lot with trusses, so you see these trusses. And then there's, we also, you can also frame with uh, beams and rafters and hand cut a roof. This particular house doesn't have that. This house has a couple different styles of a roof. It's got a hip roof. You can see here we got a roof here and a roof here and they come in and then there's a hip in the valley and then the other kind of roof is a gable. So this run over here and let's look at the gable. We have a gable here in the front. Gables sometimes look better than hips. If you pair them together you get a really neat architectural feel. Take a look up at the gable up there. You can see that gable it gives a, is a triangle on the front of the house. The hip, you can see the two roofs come together. So now you kind of know the two basic forms of a roof. This is a hip roof and a gable roof that looks like a triangle. There's a number of other different varieties of roofs that kind of take those two principles and bind them together. But now you know. I'm glad you made it this far in the video. Thanks for watching. Now hopefully you know how to build a house a little bit better. When you're driving down the road and you see that tangled mess of lumber, you'll know what some of those pieces are called. So thanks for watching. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. And come build with us.